by not have the incentive right. to farm and yeah. sell in the market. Yeah. So I think it's very, very important for us to take all of this into consideration while we are giving government the pass mark for this initiative. Brilliant. I must thank you so much, Director General Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, Mr. Shegwa Jaikadri. Thank you uh, for your time on the program today. We really appreciate it. We, we get back to your meeting and have a great weekend. Thank you for having me, Tolu. It's always a pleasure. All right, then. Well, we now move now to Ogun State, where we have the official flag of, of uh, Lagos Ota Abelkuta Road construction in Ogun State. Uh, that will be uh, done, of course, by the governor of the state, Sedapo Abiodun. We'll give you live pictures from uh, Ogun State as soon as uh, we're ready. All right, let's talk markets here now. My colleague is in the studio, F. Young Ekop. Uh, we start to talk about uh, activities for the week. F. Young, how are you today? The market oh, is closing the week in green. green. What is playing out? Uh, we've seen market recovering from, you know, it's been trading in the negative for some days now. And so um, just naturally that uh, there is a price uh, recovery. Market looking up. It's good wrapping up the weekend this way. Mm. Mm. So let's, what are the fundamentals now? Let's look at some of the... I see Oando mm. kicking so well here. Yeah, uh, 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 Oando, uh, Oando is in the news for yes. a very good reason. Yes. You know, yeah. the, the stock of Oando is already, you know, looking up and investors are running to that particular company. And um, it is on the back of uh, this uh, acquisition of the assets of uh, 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 Ajib Oil that's a positive one, and it will enable Oando to play big in the oil and gas uh, industry. I do hope that the problems that it had with the shareholders and all, some other board members for some time, that uh, it will be resolved permanently. For now, Oando seems to you know, be riding on the crest of coal and then will be you know, doing very well. You, any other? Yes. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm still looking at it. This is total. There's MC Nichols, there's Cornet, Deep Cap. Uh, but for you, what's your overall assessment of the market? You, you see the situation now. The, it is like those oil and gas companies, they have opportunity. Everybody, you, you know, when there's any problem in that sector, people get worried because it is like the banks. Apart from the banks, the oil and gas sector, you know, they are the engine of growth. They, they propel movements here and there. And so attention is given to the, even in the international uh, oil market, you understand that um, what is happening in the Asian and the European sector will affect what happens in the entire global oil and gas uh, sector. So Nigerian system is, the only problem that we have in our own area is we were not able to put our refineries in oil. Yes. Supposing we did, Tolu, we would have been making a lot of money, especially from gas, you know, from what has been happening in the global world. Think of the effects of uh, uh, Russian-Ukraine conflicts. You know, we European nations are seeking sources of gas left and right. And we've not been able to, you know, take advantage of that and harness our resources. Don't forget, we even have gas resources more than even the, petro uh, 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 the other source of uh, petroleum. Yeah. You understand? So he calls for, uh, you know, serious way of looking back at uh, how to harness our resources in that uh, sector. And so investors, for whatever reason, they seem to be right in positioning their baskets, you know, in the sector. Probably they know that one or two companies in the sector will have something big to do in the next uh, few months. So I think that is, attention is going up there. Then the banks... The banks, also, yes, the banks. Uh, yes, the banks. The big boys. Many of them, uh, they, are, they are still raising the, their funds to raise their capital. Capital, uh, yeah. So we, you know, a couple of them are still talking to investors now. To, so attention still goes there. But the issue with the banks now is some of the investors do not have investable funds. Do you understand? Because the level of dividend that many have gotten from uh, quoted companies, not commensurate with the expectation. And so with the inflation in the uh, economy and then the uh, problem with the value of the Naira, the investable funds seem to be drying up. Only the very super rich 
are able to take advantage of the opportunities available in our market. And that's why many people are sad. Because I have spoken to some friends, they say, oh, there's this opportunity, but I don't have money, I can't invest, I can't buy anything. You know, the market is for long-term you know, participation. Yeah. You see, it makes no sense that the money that you want to go invest in the <laughs> next one month, next you one month you call it. No, it is funds that you will yeah. not need for a reasonable long period of time. That's when you get to the market and it then brings you, you know, return. You expect to be so a return. That, that is it. So the way I look at it, the poverty of an average Nigerian does not allow him or her to participate in any investable opportunities available right now. But if you ask me, the Nigerian market is strongly positioned and creating wealth for those who are moving with the tide, and then they will continue to smile to the bounce. I must thank you so much, if you're in I do have a great weekend. Thank you, Tolu. Well, world share steady today, sitting uh, just 1% shy of all-time highs, while the dollar languished around one-year lows. Ahead of a speech by world's most powerful central banker, which marks uh, with Peru's for guardians uh, on the shape of a U.S. rate court. Europe's broad stock 600 index rose 0.14% in early trading. Asian shares outside Japan not down 0.1%. Japan's Nikkei gained 0.4% as investors digested inflation data and remarks from back of Japan's governor, Kazuo Uda, flags a willingness to raise interest rates if the economy and inflation turns out as forecast. MSCI's broadest index, all country world index, now trading around 1%. Uh, of its mid-July autumn peak, S&P 500 features rose 0.3%. Latest data shows Japan's core inflation accelerated for the third straight month in July, while a slowdown in demand-driven price growth could complicate the central bank's decision on further interest rate hikes in the coming months. The core consumer price index, which excludes food, fresh food items, rose 2.7% from a year earlier, faster than 2.6% climb in June. It matched the median market forecast and put the inflation rate above the central bank's 2% target for the 28-month straight month. Core index, uh, which excludes fresh food and energy, rose 1.9% after increasing 2.2% in June. It dipped below the key 2% line for the first time since September 2022. Senior economist at Sompom Institute, Pius Masoto, says increasing core CPI reflected a phase out of government subsidies to curb household utility bills. And uh, with the factor excluded, the overall inflation has been slowing. Commonwealth Bank of Australia, the bank's biggest lender, caught interest rates for some of its home loan products for new customers, struck in fears of spurring intense competition in the local market market. CBA cut the variable market rate for new borrowers with a 20% deposit by 25 basis point to 6.89%, while those with larger deposits will see a 20 basis point reduction immediately. Market analyst KCM Trade, Mr. Tim Waterer, says the move would see ease Rates of uh, lending side, uh, CBA shares, which fell as much as 0.5% earlier in the day, reversed losses and ended 0.3% higher. Tapcorp, an Australian wagering business, has been fined 4.3 million Australian dollars. That's about 2.89 million dollars for repeated breaches of gambling arm prevention laws between 2020 and 2023. According to Victorian Gambling and Casino Control Commission, investigations revealed multiple instances of non-compliance by TAPCOP. The Australian wagering business's breaches reflect systemic operational deficiencies and non-compliance with the conditions of its license, leading to significant harm to a customer. It also added that the company violated gambling arm minimization laws on nine occasions over three years, shares of Tapcorp dropped as much as 3.5%. Uh, uh, that's at the lowest since August 8. Crude oil prices were set for yet another loss this week as demand pessimism continues to pressure traders into selling, alleviating supply concerns. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude sells for $73.86 with an upward price review of 1.16%. 
Brent also experienced an upsurge of 1.07% to sell at $78.05 per barrel. Bonny Light sells at $78.62 with a decline of 2.84%. And for the OPEC basket, crude oil dealers are offering $77.03 per barrel with a downward price review of 2.11%. Well, indeed, that's our show for today and for the week. Thank you so much for being a part of it. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'll see you on Monday. Stay safe, make some cash. I'll see you.